Hello and welcome back to Stephen C Ministries. Today we've got a very special guest, Miriam. Miriam shares on her New Age to Jesus testimony and we touch on some pretty powerful topics here, including her experience of hell, ayahuasca, psych wards, and ultimately everything that led her to deliverance and faith in Jesus Christ. You can find all of Miriam's social media linked in the description box below as always. And hey, if you like this kind of content, would you consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even commenting? It helps this little channel get the message out to far more people. If you're not interested in doing all that stuff, please just sit back and be blessed by this podcast. Thank you for watching. All right, so Miriam, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to hear a lot more about your story. I've been following you for a long time and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting into it. So what got you to the point today where you're on here talking about your testimony? How did you get involved in the New Age movement to begin with? Yeah, hi, thank you for having me and uh, praise the Lord um, Yeah, for saving me. I'm so blessed. I'm almost safe now for one year and uh yeah, I'm 26. I'm from Germany and I was uh, raised Roman Catholic. So I was actually going to church every Sunday, but I never met Jesus. I didn't know that you can have a relationship with Jesus. Um, the atmosphere was really heavy and religious. So actually I fell asleep every Sunday and I was happy when church was over. So um, and when I was already a child, I was um, really um, demonic oppressed, like I faced a lot of rejection when I was young and I always felt lonely. I always felt abandoned. And um, yeah, and um, the relationship with my mother was really toxic. So I always got um, I always had the sense that I was um, different, that there was something wrong with me. Like my mother was actually speaking death over me my whole life. She cursed me. So when I was young already, I, I was really depressed like I was re like on the outside it, it, it looked like I was really a happy child but I was always like feeling really alone really abandoned and there was like a thing that like was um, um, going on in my life the whole time and and then I got really rebellious around like 14 and I got into um, uh, smoking weed I got into uh, um, listening to this like dark metal music so I was surrounded by people who had really, like a really bad influence on me and um, there was kind of like a sign, like just for love, you know, because I was looking for attention. I was looking for validation. And then, you know, I was, uh, yeah, like getting um, started, uh, started to drink alcohol. I was starting to party and all of that stuff. And um, yeah, and the relationship with my mother got worse and worse, you know, and um so yeah, like my 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 life was always a roller coaster, you know. Like there were times that I was doing well, but the most of the time I always felt a lot of anxiety and insecurity in myself. I always uh, had inner unrest. Like I was always um, had always like uh, this uh, internal unrest in my in my spirit. Like I was always, mm. yeah, like I always panic. Um, I was panicking, always anxiety about the future or like depressed about the past. So um, I never felt like. I never felt any security in my life and around 18 I found my first kind of like anchor in my life I started to go to the gym I think it was like around 17 or 18 I started to go to the gym and this became like my completely my addiction so this became my therapy I went to the gym and for the first time I felt sec uh, secure in myself I felt like uh, I was um, because I was gaining muscles I got attention I yeah I, I got attention and I got a lot of validation and because the gym gave me some kind of like purpose and a good mm. feeling for the first time. So, uh, but at the same time, if I couldn't go to the gym, I would freak out internally. I would get angry. I would get uh, felt. Yeah. Like it was completely like a drug. It was completely, yeah. An addiction, you know? Um, so uh, yeah. And at the same time, my mother got diagnosed with cancer and um, she would always say something like, oh, when I'm not here anymore, take care of this and that. So she would always like say to me that she's going to die w one day. And uh, this made me even feel like more anxious and more anxiety and more depressed because at the same time she was saying things to me like, you're the reason I got cancer or I wish uh, she wished I was never born. So she was it was really like, uh, you know, when you walk on eggshells with a person like mm. On one one moment she can be she was completely friendly and nice, but on the other hand she would freak out and curse me. So I was like a really sensitive person, a really em empathic person. So I would always like try to people please and to just get li liked by people and you know. So um, 
yeah it was like really a stronghold in my life and uh so this led me you know like getting into bodybuilding to receive more attention and validation from people but also then I um identified myself with performance and with studying hard and like getting good grades so I was studying hard to get into um, university to study medicine so because I was like you know like the doctors uh, didn't do well with my mother so I'm gonna get a doctor um, and you know I'm gonna like save people from cancer so there was a lot of pride behind it but also like this thing of like you know I want to do something good I want to do something purposeful so I was studying a lot and then um, after my uh, A level like do you say A -level, A levels yeah I um, kind of like failed in my orals and math and this uh, led me into not getting into medicine straight away. So I studied more to do an extra test. And then I said, okay, right now I'm going to Australia to like travel, um, to just work and travel. And after that, I'm coming back to study medicine. So I had my complete, my plan for the future. And this plan gave me so much security, you know, like even before going to Australia, I was already like, I was always controlling my life. So I was completely in witchcraft. I was always controlling my life. So I was like having this plan and this plan gave me so much security and happiness and hope for the future. And then I went to Australia and um, I did couch surfing, you know, when you're like staying at a yeah. place with people because I didn't want to uh, pay so much money for uh, for hostels because it's so expensive in Sydney. So uh, I did couch surfing and, um, and the thing is I always had a good... I know now it's the Holy Spirit or God, but back then I would say gut feeling. But I had with one particular guy, I had this even before this gut feeling, like there's something off. We shouldn't stay there. But in my mind, I was so afraid of money situations, you know, because I was always afraid losing my job and like not having enough money. So I was like, you know, just let's just stay there, you know, because it's for free. And um, and yeah, and that day I remember like even before that. Um, he was always like trying to touch me and like he was like 44 and back then I was 19 and he was uh, I found out he was a teacher at a, at a, at a girls high school or something like that and he was like always touching me and um, yeah like but I, because I was a people pleaser and because I couldn't say no and I couldn't set boundaries I would just let him like do everything he wanted to do and um and then one day I had a panic attack in Sydney because I knew that I would be alone with this this guy that uh, night because um, I had free and my and my friend had like uh, was on a shift and I was like telling everyone like uh, are you free tonight let's do something because I didn't want to be alone with that guy in the house and that night he uh, I came home like he. Uh, um, picked me up at the train station and then he started to message me like do you want to make some uh, 20 uh, 200 dollars right now and let's come into my room I go take a shower now and I and I, I remember I was in the room I had a panic attack for the first time I had fear of death I was just in in the room I, I was completely frozen and I was just afraid to die and to get raped I was completely in this horror paranoia scenario and he wouldn't stop uh, texting me and I said like stop it I don't want this and he keep on like texting me like really ugly perversive stuff and um thank god like nothing at the end of the day happened because i threatened him that i was calling the police or something like that but uh that night after that i couldn't sleep anymore like that night i couldn't sleep anymore and at the same time in australia i was i was being sick and i couldn't go to the gym so i was like already feeling unstable because I didn't feel secure in myself. I couldn't go to the gym and I couldn't go to work. So I was in the, at the same time, I was afraid of losing my job, that they would fire me if I don't go to, like I was afraid of not having enough money. Like all of these things came together. And then that night with that guy and then my mother being at home having cancer, like all, all this stuff came together. And I found out like two to three days before that I wouldn't get into university, that I failed this test as well. So all of this stuff came, just came together and it completely, uh, yeah, I was uh, that night. I couldn't sleep anymore. I was awake for 24 hours. And, uh, and then I had suicidal thoughts coming. Like my life doesn't make sense anymore. I'm a failure. I'm a loser. Like I have no future. I don't know what to do anymore. I have no money. Uh, like all of that stuff. And um, and yeah, it became suicidal. And then I was uh, uh, going to a doctor and he just um, gave me some prescription for like some drugs to sleep and then I took them and then I slept again for the first time and I felt like oh yeah I'm fine again but these thoughts was, were coming back now I know it were de completely demons you know but um yeah so it got worse and so I went to the uh, to a mental health clinic and uh, I got into there like a closed one for one month 
and in there I had insomnia for weeks, a paranoia. I was, uh, yeah, I, I didn't sleep like for four or five days. I didn't get up. I didn't drink. I didn't eat. I didn't shower like nothing. Like I had no more strength to do anything anymore because some people say, oh, I'm depressed. But if you're having like severe depression, it's something else. like it's, it's heavy. Like, like every, th I remember right now, every second was torment in my life. I didn't want to live in like every second was like time is not passing over. It's just torment. And, um, but thank God, like I was protected the whole time because yeah, there were so many reasons in my mind to kill myself, but I didn't do it. So praise the Lord. So then I get, got back home, a doctor from Germany came and a paramedic to pick me up to fly me back home because I wasn't able to do it by myself. Thank God I had a health insurance and uh, like my sister back then arranged everything and um, they brought me back home. And then I also went to um, psychology, to a psychologist and to a clinic, but it didn't really help me at all. Um, but then I found an anchor again in my life, like someone messaged me on Instagram, no, no, on Facebook, like if I want to start my own online business. So it was kind of like a hope thinking, oh, I can do something, you know, I have now something to do because when I was at home, I was suicidal, but my mother was putting pressure on me. She was saying, you know, like, if I don't get better, that she's going to send me away, that she can't stand me being here. So I felt like not be understand, you know, not be understood by her. I felt rejected again. I felt abandoned again. And the, there was pressure coming from her. You know, you have to start an education. You need to study. And I didn't know what to do. So there was this message coming saying, like, I can be independent. I can make passive income. So I was like, oh, wow, this is an... So for the first time I had hope again. And so I started this business and like within a couple of weeks from being completely suicidal, I got into this completely being happy and fulfilled. And I got all this praise out of a sudden, like I got all this validation from people and I achieved my first kind of like rank in this company. And I got so much praise I never got in my life. So I felt completely high. I felt like, oh, wow, now I found my purpose in life and I'm going to travel now the world. I'm going to make passive income. And um, this worked for a while. But uh, in, in the meantime, my mother died. My mother passed away. When I just turned 21, my mother passed away. But I kind of like, it was okay. It, like, it was hard, like, hard to say. But at the moment, for that moment, it was okay for me, you know, because I was completely occupied with working. And because then I felt like no one is holding me back anymore, or like, controlling my life but at the same time I felt like I don't, don't have any security anymore so I felt more in an unrest I felt more uh, fear but I was uh, distracting myself with working and with making a lot of money and all of that stuff Um, so I was in this hustle mentality chasing money and all of that uh, stuff and um, yeah and after like two years like there was I always had like even memory recall of my past of my childhood and um, there was another thing that once my mother died, there was like this um, door open for demons, like for me to getting into relationships, because before that I was okay being alone, you know, I was okay being a single, but as soon as my mother died, I was getting into toxic relationships um, that I actually didn't want to get into in the first place. So there was kind of like this, yeah, control, this demonic control in my life that I was, a, I was aware of, like something in my heart saying this is not right, but I was still doing things I didn't want to do, you know. So I was always getting into these relationships that were toxic. And um, and then I think, yeah, and then I, I left this company because I realized, you know, I'm working so much, but I'm not earning enough money for what I'm doing. So I, I went into another company, another network where I was like earning much more money. And um, and then for the in the beginning, I felt high again. I felt like, yeah, wow, now I found the thing, you know, I'm having more free time. I can travel more and making more money. And, um, but at the end of the day, I realized again, you came, you know, money doesn't really fulfill me anymore. Like this validation, like this dopamine thing, like I just got, like in the meantime, I got into this personal development stuff and the secret and I just realized, oh no, this is not my true self. You know, I'm not living my, my true self. Uh, I think even, you know, because even if I'm earning a lot of money, this is not me. Uh, this is not my purpose for my life. Uh, you know I have something deeper to do you know so in the meantime I got into this all of this new age stuff into doing yoga I already started doing yoga when I was 18 but in that time I did yoga then every day I started to meditate I started doing chakra work I started doing reiki because 
um, even though, you know, I was having all of that success, I could always feel like this pain in my heart because I had a lot of unforgiveness towards my mother, but I could never get rid of it. You know, I was willing to forgive her, but I could never do it. So I was uh, thinking, okay, now it's the time, you know, because I have my passive income. Now I have enough time to heal myself. So I was getting more into all of that stuff. Like oh, I was doing so much. I was one point I was even doing hypnosis uh, at a, with a guy who was like charging so much money. I think it was one and a half thousand for just two appointments to doing a hypnosis, doing a kind of like NLP stuff. I went to coachings where I would pay two or three thousand for coachings. Um, yeah, I did the chakra stuff. I did Reiki. Then I did my own Reiki certificate so that I could do Reiki on other people. Um, yeah, so my... And the thing is, like, for, for a second, I always felt high. I felt good. I felt like I have more conscious, you know, I have more a consciousness. I felt more aware. I felt like, oh, wow, I'm realizing where this is coming from. This is my inner child wound. Okay, I got a better by my mother. This is why I have to now heal my feminine energy. Like, all of these this, all of these uh, lies, all of these, like, false teachings. Uh, but it made sense to me at the point. So I was like, yeah, wow, I'm doing something good right now. So I got like even more prideful because I was thinking like I'm getting so conscious right now and I'm such an empath and I'm so sensitive and I'm feeling other people's energy. So I kind of like uh, even um, uh, how you say that when you I was really uh, lonely because I th I thought like every people uh, everyone is draining my energy so that I would have to stay by myself the whole time. So it was like most of the time I was in the forest. I was meditating. I didn't uh, have any contact with people anymore because I felt like oh they're all draining me, you know. So I became even more lonely. Um, and uh, yeah, and I felt more empty, and more empty. Um, didn't matter what I was doing like I felt like there was more and more so I was seeking I was seeking and then I got into a toxic relationship again I was like the most toxic relationship I've ever had and um and 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 I was at a point where I was like okay you know like now let, let's do ayahuasca because I've heard uh, a lot about ayahuasca I've heard you know that it's like healing that it's like really a life changing and people have like blissful and loving experiences so I was like okay now I'm ready for the hard stuff so we were traveling to Costa Rica and then to Tulum and uh, and uh, the first night I did ayahuasca by myself like without my my ex-boyfriend back then and in the I had the most terrifying experience ever in my life it was even more like it was even more traumatizing than um, me uh, losing my mother you know it was like it was so traumatizing I was in hell I saw demons and it was yeah it was I know this feeling of being in hell it being tormented and never like this eternal torment and never stopping so um, after that I kind of like questioned my whole life I was like you know what I was just sawing there was real and like the shame shamans were telling me this is you this is your inner your inner shadows you have to integrate this is your darkness that just uh the darkness inside of you just you know the mirror of you and I was like no this is not me you know I would love it if you could continue like to discuss a little bit when you say like that you were in hell and you're experiencing these things I've had a lot of people on the podcast who have had these horrific experiences on ayahuasca that it's almost like words fail to describe how terrifying they were. And I know that, but I would love it if you could elaborate on that a little bit, because there's so many people in today's culture and today's society that are such huge advocates of things like ayahuasca and DMT, like, you know, Joe Rogan, we see Megan Fox going and doing ayahuasca ceremonies that I think like your experience in this area, people really need to hear that. And so if you wouldn't mind elaborating on that, that'd be great. Mm. Yeah, actually, Sister in Christ asked, yesterday to explain it and as you already mentioned it's hard to explain it in words because I, always, uh, I also feel like Jesus like delivered me a lot from these uh, memories because it was so traumatizing that I That's it's sometimes hard to remember it's it's good actually but uh, yeah I could just remember that um, uh, yeah in, my, in, in this ayahuasca experience like I was completely like my soul was leaving my body so I was not in my body anymore and there was one experience where I was dying and I was becoming one with the with the ground and like everything was coming onto me and I was kind of like fading away and in that in that moment I was already like what's going on here you know it was really terrifying and then you know I I saw in this in the because when you do ayahuasca you're in the spirit realm and I saw these big demons like this blue big demons and I think I googled like it looked like this 
Shiva, God Shiva, like this uh, this demon. It's yeah. a demon, yeah. It's a, like the god of, uh, I think Buddhism, like god, the god of destruction and death. Like I saw all these big demons. And um, one thing I remember as well is that uh, hell is that when when people are in hell, they, they sin, like they become their sin. So when I was in Ayahuasca, I saw that um, people were, I saw people were uh, throwing up. I saw people were having all sex together and they were like uh, throwing up at the same time and taking a poo and it was all coming on me. And I felt like so, uh, it was just disgusting. It was so terrifying. I don't know how, like it really sounds like, just explain this sound already. Like, But it was like so ugly and so perversive and so um, tormenting and so so terrifying that you feel like wow this is never going to not never going to end like all these like really uh, demonic things all these like sins are in hell like people becoming their sin in hell and they're getting tormented by it like you know it was like and i saw all of these um people who are also doing ayahuasca being involved into this all of this like dark stuff and i was seeing it so i was not involved into it and then after a while like after i don't know how many hours but then after a ride, I come, it came a little bit back to consciousness, realizing, oh, this is not me, you know, because because I was always like so sensitive because I would just feel into every people's stuff. And then I just at the end, I realized because I was the only one di that di didn't need to throw up because normally in ayahuasca, everybody is like purging and throwing up. And but I didn't need to. And um, and yeah, it was so, so terrifying, so traumatizing. I remember the day afterwards, I tried to sleep. And every time I would fall asleep, my soul was leaving my body again. So I was unwillingly doing astral projection. I was sweating the whole time. I was re-experiencing re, uh, re the ayahuasca ceremony every night when I was falling asleep. So um, then I w got encouraged by the shamans to do an, a second thing because I said, you know, I can transform what I just, you know, experienced there in a second ceremony. So I was doing a second one. And in the second one, it was also completely traumatizing. The second one, um, I I was just lying there. I couldn't move and I had so much pain. Uh, I, like before Christ, I always suffered with PMS, like with having like really hard pain cramps during my period. So I was thinking, you know, I can heal this in ayahuasca because they promised me. And in this ayahuasca ceremony, I was like laying there and like these demons were telling me that I was actually bleeding out and everybody's looking at me and I was feeling ashamed in that, ex like in this experience, I was like being paranoid thinking that I'm just bleeding out and everybody's seeing me and I can't get up. And then there was a, sh a shaman coming to me touching me like on my whole body and then purging and he was like telling me that he's helping me that he's he's throwing up for me so he was like it was he was becoming like a, a an animal like with his mouth getting like doing like things like like eating my body he was like touching me and I couldn't move and he was actually explaining to me that he's helping me right now that he's seeing an entity coming out of my stomach and that he's like purging for me and that he's all of that stuff it was completely yeah, come back in, in, and then I had a call with him afterwards. And the thing is, the shamans themselves take ayahuasca, so they uh, themselves right. are on like I don't know, like trips. And uh, yeah, and afterwards, I told he told me, you know, that I have to do a family constellation, that this is something deeper, that he saw like an entity coming out of my stomach, and uh, yeah, and then I did, I then I did the family constellation in, in Tulum, spent more money, and then I felt like so unstable, I couldn't feel my body anymore. Like I really, I Google, like I, I think I had a psychosis. Like I didn't feel the ground anymore. I didn't feel my body. I was touching myself. I was completely getting crazy. I felt like I was losing my mind. And then I was going to a shaman, a shaman again, paying like fifty dollars for one hour that he was doing a cleansing on me again, like with some sage and like some stuff. And then I was feeling fine again for like an hour. And then I met with my with my ex boyfriend, and then we got into a fight again. And it was just oh, it was so it was such a like traumatizing experience, you know, like having that relationship, and then also like toxic relationship and all that that stuff that I, that I was just experiencing on ayahuasca. And, um, yeah, I remember coming back home and um, my ex-boyfriend would go back to, to Austria and I was back in, in Germany for the first time by myself. And I was having these uh, nightmares every night and having sleep paralysis. And every every time I would shut down the lights, I would just feel so scared, like things would fall down from my uh, table. And just it was just so spooky in my room. And I, But I couldn't explain because I thought like I was healing myself. I thought like I was 
you know, like raising my consciousness. I was doing all of these uh, things to to kind of, yeah, heal myself. But like my mental state become worse and worse. And um, and in that time, there was, a, yeah, the sister in Christ sent me some stuff about new age to Jesus. And I was, look, I was already open. It was in October 2021. So I was already open to like check something out of it. And it was, she was explaining also that yoga is demonic. And I was like studying a little bit for 10 minutes. And I had like, actually for a moment, I had this realization, wow, I think everything she's sending me is true. But then I was calling my my ex and I was like trying to explain to him. He was like, no, no, you know, uh, yoga is fine. You know, astrology, like he was kind of like justifying that everything that I was doing is, you know, okay, it's, there's nothing to be afraid of, you know. And, um, and at the time I wasn't willing to admit that I was deceived, you know, because I had this already this identity crisis. If this is true, like my whole life is falling apart. Like I don't know, even know what to believe anymore. So I wasn't ready back then. And then he kind of like, uh, pushed me into starting a crystal business so he kind of like um, urged me to do this and so we started this business together so I was selling I started to sell crystals and astrology uh, bracelets and I was starting my own like coaching with doing one-on-one like charging a lot of money for one hour like doing press work with people and um, trying to help them to heal and to gain more consciousness but at the same time, I was always already feel like there was something off. There was one moment, well, one day, uh, I woke up in the morning and I had bruises on my uh, on my stomach. I woke up on on, um, on the floor uh, next to my bed. I didn't know I didn't know how I got there and I had bruises. And I was so confused because I was like, "How did I get there?" And it it hurt so much. I had so much pain. I was like, "What just happened?" Because I was alone. Like I just woke up in the morning and having pain and having bruises and waking up next to my bed and I don't I didn't know how this happened so I was always like there was a lot of warfare already because I already had received some information about Jesus about new age of Jesus so in my mind I always had this like hmm, there was something about this maybe not you know the right thing to do so I always had in my mind like I don't know if the, what I'm doing here is really good you know so um there was a lot of warfare and um exactly one year ago from now I was in I was in Dubai back then still with my with my ex and there were a lot of also traumatizing things happening and his eyes turned black and he was cursing me speaking death over me he even um he uh, um, abused me even physically so um it was like everything was getting so so bad like so bad and then I flew back home and um then actually I finally uh, found the strength um, to completely cry out to Jesus, to uh, help him, uh, to ask him to help me to, I completely surrendered for the first time. I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I'm really open right now, like to receive the truth. If you're the way, like show me, help me. For the first time I was humbling myself because I always thought like I can heal myself. I'm my own savior. You know, I was taught I'm my own God, you know, I can create my own reality. But that moment, because it was so, uh, bad like my whole life like the circumstances were so terrifying I was for the first time um, like really able to cry out to Jesus and like okay if you're the way if you're the truth like show me and then um, yeah his his uh, presence came in my room and I got completely transformed I just remember like I felt peace for the first time in my life like real peace not this bliss fake peace in the new age but this real peace I felt for the first time and he completely uh, delivered me. Uh, I was throwing up for 30 minutes. I was um, coughing. I was just like so much demonic stuff was coming out of me. And he um, and he used some uh, like friends of my life to help me to cut also this uh, toxic relationship off to completely block him and to completely cut him out of my life. And because it was a big thing, because I was addicted to relationships, I could never be alone could never be alone but the moment I received Jesus I felt like I'm not alone anymore you know I felt like uh, he completely healed my heart that moment like he completely transformed me in that second it was super naturally um like he took out the heart of stone gave me a heart of flesh and he filled me with his holy spirit I could just see that everything else was the counterfeit I got rid of my books I burned them I destroyed my Buddha statues I even had like uh, mushrooms at home I didn't take I threw them in the lake like I just got rid of everything and um yeah and he completely changed me uh, like he completely delivered me from the spirit of fear like I don't have fear like I don't have this anymore like I have peace with him now and um, he delivered me from depression from the fear of uh, fear of rejection 
and the spirit of rejection because I always felt like I need to people please I need to be like but now I you know if people offend me uh, because I'm with Jesus or I'm evangelizing I don't care anymore I bless them you know this is such a big thing because yeah I was always like uh, um, tormented my whole life and when I came to Christ like he completely made me a new creation and then I realized he is the truth because I didn't earn it I didn't work for it I didn't do anything to to receive it like it was just his grace because I was able to admit that I was wrong and that I need him and um yeah this is like almost now one year ago yeah yeah hey man so. that's so powerful you've been through so much and one of the common themes that I've observed even as you describe your own story is this need for control and you mentioned that from even from a very young age and I was wondering how has your relationship with that changed since you've come to Christ? Like, has it been difficult for you to no longer be your own God and to relinquish that role and, and to give it to Jesus? What's it been like for you uh, walking with the Lord now since you've come out of all those practices? Um, yeah, like at the beginning, it wasn't so easy. Like, uh, yeah, there was a lot of like flash patterns. Like, uh, Jesus had to like uh, yeah, sac- sanctify me. Um, but uh, you you get a renewal of your mind, right? Because uh, it says that the Holy Spirit is leading into you into all truth, and that the Word is like a double-edged sword, and it's gonna cut out every lie, every destruction you thought that's not of God. So um, I received a lot of deliverance coming to Christ, and um, because I was in the spirit realm and I saw demons, I was really open for deliverance. You know, for like you know, I have demons and I need them to be cast out by Jesus. You know. So um, I was really, uh, yeah, open to really get set free. I was really willing to get set free, you know. And um, so I was always like, uh, even at the beginning, like starting to fast and really starting to beg Jesus to set me free, to deliver me, to heal my heart. And I was reading the words and um, and I was always like asking God, like, help me to trust you more, help me to surrender to you, help me increase my faith. So at the beginning, like at the beginning, because Jesus' presence was so near, it was really easy, but... Uh, after a while because his presence was so near because i was so lost this is why like god knows what you need in that moment and yeah. he was so close and after a while in my, in my walk he wasn't so close anymore and i felt like because we walk by faith and not by sight so i started a little bit controlling my life again because i didn't feel it so much and because i was always like thinking my feelings are my truth and my feelings are my god so it was a little bit hard then so i just kind of like started doing my own thing i was striving relying on my own understanding and then um, I got a revelation and uh, the Holy Spirit actually convicted me and I had to repent. And I was like, yeah, like it was a process of like surrendering like more and more to Jesus and like to letting he be completely my Lord in every area of my life. And he was like actually doing this, uh, especially in the last three or four months. But now I know, like now I have this thing that like, oh yeah, I can just trust God. He has the best plan for me. I'm lost without him and I need him. And like I ask him about everything. So I'm not like doing my own thing anymore because before I was like, yeah, I was really rebellious and rebellion is witchcraft. I was really a stubborn. I was really a stubborn person. I was always doing my own thing. So it was at being a little bit hard to like completely be submissive and to completely uh, trust God and to like let him do everything. But uh, now, like after like almost one year with the Lord, it's yeah, it's easy now to surrender and to trust that God has a better plan for me and that I can just let give him everything and uh yeah, put my faith only in him. But then, yeah, one of the things that I've I've noticed Christians debate about is like, when you become a Christian, is deliverance still necessary afterwards? Like, is it a process mm-hmm. where you feel like you're still being, uh, or for a period of time after that you became a Christian, you were still experiencing deliverance or did it happen in one moment? What was that like for you? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, when I first came to Christ, I had like, I think I had like my, this big, big deliverance. It was like really supernaturally where like I got like set free from this Kundalini spirit and from witchcraft. And this is what made me feel like it was this is what made me uh, vomit for 30 minutes. And um, and yeah, but it was like then it was a process. And um, and it, no, it was not a one time thing. I realized that, you know, the Lord's prayer is uh, deliver me from all evil. And it's a daily mm. prayer. Wow, so that's good. There, and there are like. You can always open a door for for demons to kind of like sneak in. No, we're not. We can't be possessed, right? We can't be possessed, but we can be oppressed, even as Christians. And um, and I was studying a lot of books because I was really interested in that in the topic about like demons and everything. And you know when when um, 
when I was once at a conference and the Holy Spirit was really present there, like I manifested. So I realized that there are still some struggles I didn't, I wasn't aware of, you know, because when God's presence is there, there's freedom and you get set free. So it was a really uh, um, 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 a process. For example, I had this um, always this sexual demonic dreams, even though I was I was a Christian already, and I was complete I completely re repented from everything. I was not even I wasn't even battling with lust or anything. It was easy for me to completely uh, repent from that. Praise the Lord, because I know some people are like struggling with addiction, porn, or whatever masturbation. I was never addicted to anything like that, so it was easy for me to say I repent. You know, I'm just waiting to marriage. I I don't care. But I was still having these demonic like physical dreams. And I was like, this is demonic, like I need deliverance. So I was going to a conference and they pray prayed for me to get, to receive deliverance from spirit spouse. And uh, I manifested, I was screaming and I was throwing up again. It was just like weeks ago now. So, um, so it was a process because God showed me this. And I was like, are there any open doors? And I was like, oh, there's sometimes this fantasy spirit of like me fantasizing or me putting men on a pedestal, like uh, putting idolatry in, in, uh, of marriage. Even though I repented and I got a new, newborn creation in Christ, I still, um, I was still like having this warfare. So I was willing to get set free and I was fasting for the, four days and I, with that intention, I will get set free by Jesus. So I was going to the conference and I received deliverance. But I think it's a process that um, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth and will show you things step by step if there needs to be any sanctification or anything. Because um, if you've been in the world for 25 years and completely living in sin and then you come to Christ, you can't expect that from one to the other day, you just, everything is just peace and love for every day, you know? So, and it was also crazy for me to realize that because I was, I was always teaching, you know, just do this one ayahuasca thing, just do this one meditation, just do this one whatever coaching and you will be set free. But it was a lie, right? So, um, and yeah, it was, it's the same like coming to Christ, it's a sanctification process and you will grow deeper in your, in your faith. But also at the same time, God will show you some things that need to be, uh, need to be uh, set free from him, you know? So it was, yeah, it was, um, a sanctification process but at the beginning I, would, I received a lot of like the big strongholds like fear depression anxiety I completely got set free from I don't need to do any deliverance for that anymore but there are these other things you know like as I mentioned with the spiritual thing that was something he he revealed to me um later and uh yeah yeah that's huge thanks very much and one of the last questions that I had for you is like I see so many people, especially young women here in Melbourne, that have stories similar to yours in terms of why they get caught up in the New Age movement. Maybe they're seeking, uh, a lot of my guests talk about the desire for control, and that's why they get into witchcraft, like to manipulate reality around themselves or to feel protected or to seek healing in the New Age modalities, like, you know, whether it's meditation, breath work, all of these things like ayahuasca, like healing is so core to why people get into it, even though ultimately it's doing more harm than good. Um, and mm. so I'm wondering if you could speak to people that are in that movement now, maybe that they're, they're listening to your New Age to Jesus testimony now and someone sent them that. What would you say to people that are in that space right now? I would, uh, yeah, I would tell them that um, you should uh, seek, the, if you really want to know the truth, you should um, ask Jesus to show you the truth and to be open to um yeah, to really get set free, because if you're honest to yourself, I would, just, I would say to a person, if you're honest to yourself, you still feel empty, right? Like if you're really, really honest to yourself, you are missing something, right? Like you still feel like maybe pain or anxiety or anything. Um, and that thing, that emptiness you're feeling is for Jesus Christ alone. And uh, I would encourage that person to really go into prayer, to humble um, themselves and to go on their knees and to ask Jesus to show them the truth and to really like in the heart, really... Um, being open to to receive them and um because the thing is like the saying in his word that when you come to christ he's giving you water and you never be thirsty again and this is what we're looking for like if we're in the new age we are always thirsty there's always something more it's it's a never-ending hamster wheel and it's exhausting i would tell a person like it's exhausting right but if you come to christ you're home like there's nothing to seek anymore like you finally you finally found the truth you know like you are satisfied in jesus and this is what everybody wants actually in life you know like to know jesus and to be filled with his love and um yeah i would just tell them like seek jesus and everything you're battling with right now he will set you free from 
like he can heal like he can break every chain like everything that like because everyone has some burden or something they like struggle with in their life or like mm. experience some trauma so but jesus can heal everything jesus can heal it and you don't need to pay for it you know what i mean like in the new age yeah. you have to pay so much money for crystals and for coaching and jesus the only thing you have to pay is like get rid of your pride and lay down your pride and humble yourself and admit that you need jesus and he can save you you know like this is like it's a free gift it's it's grace you know like you don't have to earn it you don't need to pay for it it's like the best thing you can receive so um yeah amen and then as you've received that gift i see that you've you've moved away from so many of the practices you were involved in and i know that some people especially when they come to christianity they find it hard to give up uh, certain new age practices that they found a lot of peace in and i'm wondering now it's just sort of come to me what kind of what has motivated you to leave behind practices like meditation or like yoga? And what do you think about Christians that are still perhaps dabbling in those practices? Do you think that it has implications for their spiritual walk? Things like practicing yoga, meditation, and breath work. Um, mm. Is there a place for that in the Christian life? No, there's no place for that in the Christian life. I, I actually believe they're, never, they're not really newborn and they have never experienced the Holy Spirit. Because when I got filled by the Holy Spirit, all the attraction and the desire to do it just left me. Like yeah. I, I, I would have to force myself to, I don't see any sense in it anymore. Like the moment I met Jesus, like all of these things doesn't even make sense to me anymore. I don't even want to do with them. I, I don't feel any desire or attraction or like urge to like, no, I completely felt like resentment against all of these things. I was like, I don't need to do a breath work. I have Jesus now. I feel peace. I don't need to do like, <gasps> you know what I mean? That's like, awesome. Yeah. So I believe like if, christians are doing all of these things they never like they don't know jesus they don't have an intimate relationship with jesus i don't think they have received the baptism of the holy spirit maybe they're just christians in their mind you know like with just religion or they may be raised like that because i know like i've seen like yeah christians being just raised like that but it, because but they never really encountered the power of, of god so they're still seeking in the world for some stuff for some counterfeit stuff but i think when you really met jesus you don't need any of these things like you don't even want to do them like you feel completely uh, has repulsed like when you don't yeah repulsed. When you repulsed from it so yeah man that's really powerful so like miriam just as we wrap up here i just want to thank you so much for coming on and being willing to share your testimony was there anything else that you wanted to say to people before we wrap up uh yeah i just want to tell like, I just pray that everybody who's listening this, uh, to this right now, that their eyes may get opened and their ears may get open and their heart may get ready to receive the truth. And yeah, I just want to tell them that Jesus died for you on the cross to be free. He died for you to have eternal life. And because I've experienced hell, I've exp I know that hell is real. I know that demons are real. And Jesus came to set you free and to wash you clean from all of your sins, you know, because at the end of the day, we all fell um, short for the glory of God. So we all sinned in our life. So we all need Jesus. And I just want to tell you that um, Jesus loves you and that he died for you. And that if you give um, your life to him, that he will set you free from everything, from everything. And he will make you a new creation. And uh, yeah, you can have peace. It surpasses all understanding and be filled by his love and his joy. And um, you will be finally at home. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, thank you for that beautiful gospel presentation. One of the things that you know I love so much about your story and I want to thank you for personally is just your willingness to be so real about the experiences that you had. Because like I've had my own experiences on psychedelics and my own experiences that are almost difficult to talk about, especially like when you're further away from them and you're a Christian. But I think that you being so raw with what you've been through is really going to help people to see that they're not alone when they're in similar circumstances. And I know that when you're watching people on the internet, it can feel like they're very far away from you, but Honestly, mm. Christ has transformed us and brought us peace. And where you're at right now, a lot of Christians have been, right? And Jesus came so that mm. he can set us free. He can give us life more abundantly. And so you will never regret even for a second coming to Christ. So I no. want to thank you for coming on. <laughs> yeah, I think you concur with that. So you, you agree with that. And um, yeah, so thanks for coming on. Where can people find you? Because I know you're pretty active still on uh, Instagram in particular. Where can people reach out? Where can they find you? Where can they find your content? Yeah, on Instagram and on YouTube. Yeah, I think you will you will link the absolutely. The, you, yeah, you will link it below. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna link all that below. Um, I think we're gonna say goodbye for now. We're coming up in about an hour, but thank you so much for your testimony, for your vulnerability, and uh, I hope that everybody listening to this has the chance to experience Jesus in the same way that you have, in the same way that I have. 
uh amen. thanks for watching yeah amen may this bless so many people and uh yeah bring 100 time fruit amen amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs>